fun fact. Uh, that's what I look like. Um, I do not look. I'm sorry, what? It, what? That's what I look like. It looks like a Stone Toss comic, but like gay. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to pause. I don't. I've asked Carlin before. And like, I'm like, how? I don't. Again, I realize some people aren't her fan, but this woman, I don't know how she finds the things that she finds. I don't know how she does it. I've asked her for like pointers before and she did like a bit, I, she, I, she just gets, I, and this took place two days ago. She is like right on top of it. And I, like, it is a skill that I feel like very few other people have is actually finding like original things. A lot of people, most people on the internet and I'm something again that I'm trying, I'm, when I'm making this criticism, I'm, I'm looking inwardly first. A lot of people on the internet that like are, that make content, content creators are oftentimes just re reacting to other people's content or whatever, rather than, than doing their own original thing. Carlin does her own original thing constantly. She finds stuff like this constantly and it is, that's not easy and she makes it look so easy. So again, I, look at this thing. Like this little, little sassy hand. All right, I'm sorry. I'm still, I'm still trying to find like some of his stuff online. Uh, what, what in the hell? Well, hey, hey, guys! Happy Monday! Welcome to the Cult. The Cult is a show that I do Monday through Friday on this here YouTube channel at 5 p.m. Where we normally do deep dives into the far left, but. the insanity that has erupted over the last several days on Twitter X whatever I will never call it X I don't care it's just it's it's too delicious it's too delicious if you guys haven't been following so essentially here I don't know what you're talking about Reagan, I just because just because I'm wearing a blue octopus taking over the world with the megalomaniac header, which I know you can't see right now, but I'm going to show it to you. Don't worry. I have it pulled up. You can you can buy this amazing shirt in the store. Hang on. You can buy this amazing shirt in the Unwoke Art Store. We'll talk about that in a second. Actually, why don't I just show it to you? Why don't I just show it to you? I actually haven't ever really talked about this design all that much because, quite frankly, I was afraid it was going to get me canceled. But it is a beautiful design that you can just search, just go to the Unwoke Art Store, and I'll put this in the uh, I'll put this in the chat on YouTube and on the Rumbles and on the Twitters. You're just going to have to fend for yourself. And you can get the Megalomaniac shirt, you can get a long sleeve shirt, you can get a sweater, you can get a hoodie. This is the one that I'm wearing right now in black. And I was quite frankly shocked at how good the printing came out on this. It looks so good in person. It looks so good. And so, so pick up the shirt in the store. It's awesome. If you want to, there's other stuff you can get in the store too. You can find all that at unwokeart.com. All that stuff does go to support the work I'm doing and I really do appreciate it. But we're not talking about that right now. Yeah, it's it's just a friendly octopus and a globe signifying cancel culture. That's all it is. No big deal. It looks great. It's a comfortable jersey shirt. I cut up the shoulders of it because I like this look and I like showing off my tattoo that I sat in the chair for 20 hours to get. Anyway. Anyway. If you guys haven't been following along with the drama that has just blown up to high heaven on X, here's a too long didn't read. Candace Owens has been tiptoeing her way for a while into being like, what the ever loving F Jewish rabbis. And she's been getting in all these fights with rabbis. And there are two different rabbis in particular who don't like Candace Owens. 
And, you know, some of us, some of us thought when this all started happening, you know, back in November, because this has been building for months, some of us, some of us, one of us in particular, may have tweeted on November 16th of last year, how long until there's an article on the Daily Wire asserting that Christ is king is a dog whistle, the same as saying Hitler should have finished the job? It's like I'm some sort of prophet. I keep telling you guys, I, I do have a show every Tuesday night with a literal psychic. There's a reason for that. It's like I'm a prophet. Okay, like anyone could have seen this coming about 8,000 miles away. I don't want to act like this was some out of the wall, like absurd prediction or anything. Anyone really could have made that prediction. But if you guys want to fill up the Carlin was right tip jar in which you all owe me $2 every single time I'm right about something that you're wrong about, you can go ahead, start sending in the super chats. I'm not going to tell you no. Because God knows the things I'm saying on Twitter could get me canceled at any moment. So you might as well, you might as well take advantage while you still can. So this whole thing with Candace Owens has been building up for months. And then on Friday, she was unceremoniously fired by the Daily Wire for being too uppity. What that says about the Daily Wire firing uppity black women is you know a whole other question that we're just going to we're going to address that another day all right but then today jeremy boring who's the ceo of the daily wire came out and flat out said that anyone who says christ is king is being anti-semitic now here's the thing I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Jew. I'm not a Christian. I'm a generalized spiritualist, man. I, I learned from teachers all over the world for lots and lots and lots of years. I don't ascribe to any of the Abrahamic religions. This is like the ultimate thing of like, not my monkeys, not my circus. But in my spiritual belief system, Jesus is an ascended master. It's not as though Jesus has no role in my spiritual belief system. Jesus is actually a significant figure. I mean, there are, there are plenty of other ascended masters too. He's not like the only ascended master or anything, but he's one of the ascended masters. And so, I mean, it's not really out of left field for me to be weighing in on this to say that I find it a little perturbing when the Jewish CEO of the Jewish hundred million dollar funded company that is the daily wire sends out a whole long quote tweet not quote tweet colon cope tweet that's what we're going to say cope tweet explaining why saying christ is king is anti-semitic because it just seems as though everything is anti-semitic on friday for happy hour last week we watched a presentation given by a guy named Dorian Bell. Dorian Bell is an associate professor of Jewish studies at the University of California at Santa Cruz. And he gave a lecture at the University of California at Berkeley in which he said it was anti-Semitic if you oppose black and brown immigration of migrants into the United States, even if those migrants are not Jewish. He also said it was anti-Semitic if you oppose critical theory and the Frankfurt School. I have clips of both of that coming. I was just exporting them earlier. And they're all in the Friday stream if you guys want to go back and see it. So now we are up to a point where saying that Israel is genociding the Palestinians is considered to be anti-Semitic. Saying we shouldn't be giving Israel billions of dollars every single year for no reason is anti-semitic saying we shouldn't be funding any foreign wars is anti-semitic saying that you're anti-war and anti-genocide of all peoples is considered to be anti-semitic saying you are against the immigration of black and brown migrants 
who are not Jewish is anti-Semitic. Saying you are against the Frankfurt School is anti-Semitic. And now, to top it all off, the cherry on top of the Sunday, saying Christ is king has been deemed to be anti-Semitic. And I'm sorry, man, but the world has done lost their damn minds. And I've been having a ball over on Twitter. It is so much fun right now. I've been saying Christ is king. Christ is, I don't, I'm not a Christian. I like, it's just like, it's just so fun because they, they're getting so riled up. The woke right is getting so riled up. And you know what it is? This is such a beautiful, 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 beautiful opportunity to be able to understand who the paid shills are on the conservative right. One of those paid shills, actually, I probably should have brought up his, uh, his profile before I got the stream going, but I didn't. I had other stuff to do, like putting on lipstick and stuff. James Lindsay is losing his goddamn mind. He is losing his mind, and it is so great. It is so great. Let's see. Let me just just go back. James Lindsay, the Groypers have been going at James Lindsay for the past two days, and I find it kind of funny, isn't it? Because James Lindsay was very, very quick to block everyone in my community who tried to show him primary source video evidence about what the left is doing from things that we watch constantly six days a week on this channel. James didn't want to see any of that, but he doesn't seem to be blocking the groipers that he's trying to make an example of in his feed. And he's kind of, oh, he retweeted Karen Ann Harlow's. <laughs> Karen Ann Harlow's is a shill of a different variety. I don't like her either. But she's going after James Lindsay for saying that saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic. Let's see if we can get to his good stuff. Da, 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 da. Oh no, don't tell me. Don't tell me Chris Rufo is getting involved in this. No! Not surprised though. I'm going to look at that later. I gotta go. Apparently, Lindsay has just been tweeting an effing lot. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you're not a grifter, James. Sure, sure. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Wow, he has been tweeting a lot. It's almost like James Lindsay is trying to bury all of his tweets from yesterday in which he was saying that, that saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic. Anyway, I can't I can't scroll through any more of these, but suffice it to say, James Lindsay is, well, he's having some feelings right now. Maybe I could go back to my feed where I was quote tweeting him. And we could see. For example, do 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 for example. James was bemoaning the Groypers going after him quite a bit. Let's see. James Lindsay was saying, take all the time you need to metabolize the fact that many people you thought were on your side are in fact not. It's something you need to start to get used to experiencing. Duh, James, duh. We all thought that you were on our side and then it turned out that you weren't on our side and that you were just in favor of taking money from conservative shill organizations in order to lie to people. Here, here's a good one. On this one, yesterday, James Lindsay is calling on the right to temper down the anti-Semitism problem. Now, what I would like to know is like, what is the definition that James is using of anti-Semitism exactly? Well, I'm sure I did leave some stuff out, Yasmin. I'm trying to truncate, okay? But what is the definition that James is using of anti-Semitism? Because like I said, we all have been hearing a lot of different definitions of anti-Semitism, but it, but it's kind of funny because today James said in, in response to anomaly today, James said that he would crush anomaly in a debate about this because he's a free speech absolutist. All right. Rottweiler says people forget the daily wire was an FU venture by Shapiro funded by Ted Cruz and his neocon cronies after Breitbart news leaned populist. Thanks to Bannon. 
Yeah, I didn't forget about that. Anyway, the point is, let me see. There's some other James stuff, too. You can find all that in my feed. The point is that conservative influencers have goddamn well lost their minds. Everyone is saying that Christ is king is anti-Semitic. Or they're saying, no, that's stupid. Christ is king is not anti-Semitic, which is my position. There we go. Brooklyn right there. There we go. So instead of watching the left today, I thought that we would watch the right tearing each other as part apart. Yes, well, this is, let me talk, I'll talk about this in a second, Human Centipede. So what we're going to do, guys, is I would like to watch, because I have something I need to do tonight. Okay, breaking news, breaking news. On Monday nights at 7 p.m., I host a supporter Zoom call. All right. And this is like every single week, almost every single week, Mondays at 7 p.m. They usually go to about 10 p.m. And we get on a private Zoom and we talk about stuff. But something very important has come up tonight. And so I am happy for all my supporters. And I'm going to send out a note to this effect. I will be starting the Zoom call at 7 p.m. But I'm going to need someone to take over hosting duties if you guys want to stay in the Zoom call because Lauren Chen is hosting a Twitter space at 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central Time, so 8 p.m. my time. And I'm going to be in it, and it's going to be great. And nothing is going to go wrong with this plan. I will definitely not be accused of anti-Semitism at some point in this Twitter space because I refuse to say that Christ is King is anti-Semitic. Thank you, Yasmin. I appreciate that. And so I'm, I'm taking a point of personal privilege and I'm leaving the supporter zoom a little bit early, although people can still stay on and chat if they want to go do this Twitter space. And as human centipede pointed out, but did do? Where do you point it out? <clears throat> you know, it's funny is that James, who has been mouthing off about this for the better part of the last two effing days, James, according to Lauren, has declined an invitation to join. Why would he do that? I just don't understand. Can't, can't James Lindsay defend his ideas in a Twitter space? With the peons. Hmm. Lauren Chen seems to be a generally pretty fair person to me. I don't know. But I'm going to be in the Twitter space. And I think some other people are going to be in the Twitter space too. Including. Including. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this right here. Nothing, and I mean nothing, could go wrong with this plan at all. So I know you guys will forgive me for leaving the supporter call a little bit early tonight, but I have to. That's just the way it goes. If you want to be uh, one of the people that joins me for that call and for the call on Wednesday, where we do a call at noon on Wednesday, um, head over to my Substack, which is Carlin, K-A-R-L-Y-N dot Substack dot com. Sign up for a membership for eight bucks a month, 80 bucks a year. This is the very best way to support the work I'm doing. You get access to two Zoom calls every single week on Mondays at 7 p.m. And on Wednesdays at noon, you get access to the supporter discord in which we are about to enter into my month of narcissism in the supporter discord because it's almost april and april is my birthday month because my birthday is on april 12th and because i'm an aries and that is an inherently narcissistic sign i dub april my month of narcissism which means i get to pick all the movies for movie night in the supporter discord normally jennifer picks them but this is my month and so we will be doing a movie night every single Sunday at 8 p.m. Next week is still Jennifer's pick. I think she's doing some poll about uh, Stephen King movies or something. So we're going to still do one more of hers. But in April, we do movies that are my choice. And I've already got some ideas and it's going to be awesome. We will not be watching Schindler's List. No, no, thank you. Anyway, anyway. 
uh, head over to the to the 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 the, the, the Substack if you want to join that, and I really appreciate it, guys. All right, let's jump into things because I'm already half an hour behind. Yeah, so Zoom calls are available to Substack and local supporters. Um, and the reason that is honestly is it's just a pain in the ass for me to post on all the different platforms, so I limit them to Substack and local supporters. Um. I probably should expand them to YouTube channel members as well, if I'm being honest about it. I'll try to remember that, Rottweiler. I really will. Let's see. How do we feel about Florida social media ban? I have no idea what that is, Tate, and I'm sorry. I have been up to my up to my eyes in anti-Semitism today. I have no idea what's going on in Florida. I try to block out Ron DeSantis as much as possible. I'm not giving you one of... No, Trendolin, this is my month. No, just because, no, denied, sorry. Anyway, let's jump right into it. And I might stream that Twitter space tonight too. We also have Rabbi Shmuley. Do you guys want to watch some short videos from Rabbi Shmuley to see what he has to say about this? You guys know this guy, this crazy rabbi? Like, this guy is nuts. This guy is legitimately nuts. He's got a few videos about Candace that are only, like, a couple minutes long. Let's see. We've got this one, which is two minutes long. This was two weeks ago. We've got this one, which is three minutes long, which is three days ago. Let's watch this one real quick. Hi, everyone. The Book of Proverbs says that when your enemy falls, you should not rejoice. Believe me, I take no joy in seeing Candace Owens fired by okay. the Daily Wire. This should have happened two years ago when her defamation of the Jewish people started in earnest and when she began defending the Hitler-loving Kanye West, her bestie. Why Ben Shapiro waited two years is something that we will find out. In the meantime, all of our family's legal claims for her defamation of me as a murderer, allegedly, you know, et cetera, the things that she said about our family, the gross defamation and potential incitement to violence remains, but really, I have to give credit where credit is due. We don't, we Jews do not seek to fight. We do not seek to battle. We are the people of the book. We're not the people of the sword, but there's a new generation of Jews conceived of liberty and born in freedom. And we will never again allow someone like Candace Owens to defame us, destroy our names and lead to the kind, God forbid, of violence that we saw in the 1930s or Jews as Jews are slowly defamed. Remember Candace Owens, according to the New York Post, was principally fired after she liked a tweet against me that said that I, as a rabbi, enjoy drinking Christian blood. Those days of the blood libel Israel committing genocide, they're over. We're going to fight like crazy. Wait, he's pissed off that Candace Owen li she liked a tweet? I got one of the videos, Jasmine. Thank you. She, he, she, he, wait, he's pissed off that she liked a tweet? Really? But there's a new generation of Jews conceived of liberty and born in freedom, and we will never again allow someone like Candace Owens to defame us, destroy our names, and lead to the kind, God forbid, of violence that we saw in the 1930s or Jews as Jews are slowly defamed. Remember, Candace Owens, according to the New York Post, was principally fired after she liked a tweet against me. That's she liked a tweet. Does anyone want to explain who invented cancel culture? Like, for realsies? Said that I, as a rabbi, enjoy drinking Christian blood. Those days of the blood libel Israel committing genocide, they're over. We're going to fight like crazy. But I have to give credit where credit is due. My daughter, Rachelea, who is a Rebetzin in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at the Beis Mashiach community, uh, and at the Shtetl, her own community, and who is one of the most ferocious lionesses for the Jewish people, uh, one of the most beautiful, one of the most eloquent, and one of the most pure, just her total dedication to the Jewish people. She fought a, an unrelenting battle to expose every lie that Candace Owens said about the Jews over the course of two years. She chronicled it, she posted it, other people would later a little bit yeah uh, a little know, bit claim credit but this isn't about credit this isn't about who brought her down it's about a father telling a daughter how proud i am of you not because and i'm sorry for candace Owens. i'm sorry she's having a psychotic meltdown i really am i hope that she really gets the help that she needs I psychotic that meltdown that doesn't excuse what she did 
Mm. If she publicly apologizes to me and my family, we may not pursue any legal claims. I, have, I take no joy in her downfall, as I said. It would have been better had there been not no anti-Semitism in the world in general, and in particular from Candace Owens on the Daily Wire, owned by a yarmulke wearing Ben Shapiro, who allowed it for two years. But baby girl, Rochaleo, I call her Baba. I'm so proud of you, Medela, because you didn't do this out of spite or vengeance or dislike of anyone. You did it out of pure love of justice, love of humanity, love of the, the spark of God that exists in every human being, and love of the Jewish people who have suffered enough and been brutalized for 2,000 years, and the victims, the innocent victims, the 1,200 who were slaughtered by Hamas, and 140 who are still uh, hostages to Hamas who have to be released. Baba, you did it for them, and your father could not be more proud. Happy Purim, everybody. But now, who Haman was brought down on Purim, and all the modern Hamans that want to take down the Jewish people, from Iran to Hamas to Hezbollah, to the lesser Hamans, I admit, of course, lesser Hamans, the Candace Owens of this world, the Nick Fuentes, you will meet your downfall, not, God forbid, in any violent way. That's never what we Jews want. But we, you will meet your downfall in being held accountable for the lies and defamation you say against the Jewish people. Shabbat shalom, everyone. So that's Rabbi Shmuley, but I've got I've got a, I've got a I've got another video about Rabbi Shmuley that that Yasmin tagged me in. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Which one is it? Which one is it? So this is another video of Rabbi Shmuley. Just so that you guys can see that he's absolutely the sane one in this scenario. <laughs> That's Rabbi Shuli. Wasn't, wasn't there also another video? Wasn't there another video of him giving a child a lap dance? Am I crazy? Am I crazy for thinking that? Hang on. Let me just see if I can find that. Rabbi Shmuley. It was, oh, here it is. Here it is. I found it. I found it. Hang on. Hang on. Here it is. I'm not making any judgment, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just showing primary source evidence. That's all I really do. Hang on. So that's Rabbi Shmuley. That's one of the, the rabbis that's been upset at Candace Owens. But I don't want to watch that anymore. I want to, I feel like I need to prep for this Twitter space tonight because, okay, and I want to be very clear. I'm not like a Candace Owens fan. I don't think Candace Owens is good. I think that Candace Owens is a narcissistic, clout-chasing grifter who will literally say and do whatever she needs to in order to make money and have status. Now, where I will give Candace points, though, is she did kind of like bite the hand that was feeding her on this. So you have to give credit where credit is due, even though I think that Candace Owens is a narcissistic clout chasing grifter with no principles and no ethics. And she's absolutely not a Christian. I don't care how many times she says Christ is King. She ain't no real Christian. I'm sorry. You have to give credit where credit is due. She did the right thing on this one. She stood up to people who were telling her to shut her mouth. I have respect for that. And so I thought we would watch some of this episode where Candace is debating with a different rabbi. And apparently this is one of the things that kind of like led up to her being fired. So we're going to watch this for a little while. And then I'm going to go start my community Zoom call at seven. And then I'm going to go do that Twitter space at eight. And I'm going to try to stream the Twitter space on my channel. 
because why not? And that's going to be the way it goes. Okay, everyone ready? Hang on. Nick says, hiding behind the cloak of its anti-Semitism to attack free speech because he got his feelings hurt over a liked comment. Yeah, that's exactly right. People are allowed to like things that you don't like. I'm sorry. Like, liking a tweet is not defamation. defamation. Woke on both sides. Indeed. All right, let's see what happened. Right into this, a very exciting episode for you today. Here in my hands, I am holding an article that was published by PJ Media. The title is, Let's Be Honest, Candace Owens is a Jew-hating bigot. It was written by a rabbi, Rabbi Michael Barclay. So I read this article, and honestly, there are only two options here. Either this rabbi is genuinely ignorant of everything that I have ever said, in which case I'm happy to clarify it because he will be joining us on today's episode, or the other option is he's completely aware of the things that I have said, and he is just a monster. I'm excited to find out when we sit down here with Rabbi Barclay. That's what we have coming up on Candace Owens. No, but it, but it, really a pre-show. I tell you, you know, I've written. Certain, thank you for having me, Candace. And, and, and Candace, I, I really want to tell you, you know, I've written certain things, and it, and it gives me great optimism um, that you're gracious and reached out yesterday and, and wanted to get together. It actually, makes me very optimistic. Yeah, so I am the ultimate defender of free speech, and I believe that we need more speech, not less of it. When we see things and we believe them not to be to be true, rather than censoring that individual, we should actually give that person a platform because people will walk away and be able to assess whether or not the statements they heard was true. And so just to give a little bit of background to people listening to this, you appeared on Charlie Kirk's show, and you referred to me as anti-Semitic. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, not, only that, not, not only that, Candace, I've actually written a couple of articles, one in November and one last week, uh, about your anti-Semitism. Yeah. Correct. Um, and referring to that article that you wrote last week, published on March 9th, it, the heading reads, Let's be honest, Candace Owens is a Jew-hating bigot. So that's very punchy, very strong language. And I want to actually go through this article point by point so that you can defend your position and say and why Candace, you wrote Candace, this? Candace, I think before that, and as I said, I'm very optimistic that you would have a dialogue about something. I think before that, there are some, some real steps, which is, I have called you, and I'm not alone in this, many Jews have called you an anti-Semite. Mm -hmm. Is he already trying to struggle session her? Because this kind of already feels like a struggle session, doesn't it? I also talk to people who say you have a really sweet heart, just so you know. And you and I have a number of mutual friends uh, in the world. Candace Owens doesn't but have a sweet heart. I think it's important to first identify what anti-Semitism is. It is a different type yes. of hate than any other type of hate in the world. Let's do and that. And if you and I are Let's speaking crossways it. because we have a different understanding and definition, yeah, that's not going to lead to any dialogue. That's not going to lead. Look, I, I said to Scott, I'd love to walk out of here and say, you know what? I was wrong. And write an article. I apologize, and I was wrong. But the first piece is to have a mutual and understanding of what is anti-Semitism. I think that would help a tremendous amount. I actually totally agree with you on that. That is a perfect place to start. Yeah. Could you okay, provide so for us a definition of anti-Semitism? Please do. I, absolutely. I really appreciate that because I think that is the break. If we're not speaking the same language, where can we go? Mm -hmm. Right. So. There's a man, um, a blessed memory man named Lord Jonathan uh, Sachs, who was the chief rabbi of England. He had a great line. He really defined anti-Semitism, um, that, that anti-Semitism is Jews have no right to exist collectively as Jews with the same rights as other human beings. It's kind of a weird statement. So let's just track back to understand the history of anti-Semitism. 2,000 years ago, Jews don't accept Jesus as Messiah. For people who do not have faith, as the early Christians, as some of them have faith, some of them accept Jesus, but they don't really in their heart. And you and I know both know people like Rob McCoy who accepts it fully in their heart, and other people who are doing it without faith. And they're, they, they're, those who have less faith, the fact that a Jew exists, let alone thrives, mm. is a threat to their faith. Because how can the Jew not accept Jesus as God and still thrive? Unless he's associated with the devil. So you start having these these myths that are created of the Jew being identified. Why does it take this much explanation 
to define what anti-Semitism is. It really shouldn't require a whole long story and world history. Codified with the opposite of God. This really codifies in 1144 in Norwich, England, what's called the blood Bible. This is really important to understand, especially today in 2024. In 1144, a young boy is killed. And the local priest says that's because the Jews need to make their matzah with Christian blood. It's called the blood line. Let's blame, blame the problems of other people on the Jew. It's just so you know, that's, that's so ridiculous, not only just on its face, but we're forbidden from even having meat that has any blood in it. This is a Torah law. You can't have, that's why, you know, we, we can't have state tartar. Okay. So this gets perpetuated. In combination with a fourth century, the, what's called the yeah. Vulgate. I'm sorry, did you say 11, in 1140 this happened? You're right, Bruce. 1144 in Norwich, England. Okay. okay. This is after in the fourth century, you have something called the Vulgate. The Vulgate is the official translation of the Bible. In Hebrew, there's no vowels. And, it, and the person who translates, Saint John, who translates the Vulgate knows what he's doing is translating wrong. He puts down that when Moses comes down from Mount Sinai, he has horns. Okay, Karen, when actually the word was Karan, meaning that light shone from his head. So now by 1144, you have the anti-Semitic myth of Jews have horns and they drink blood. And I know people who've been asked when they went into the army and other places, can I see your horns? So this still exists today in 2024 throughout America. And I don't mean just in little rural areas. It exists today, these myths. That Vulgate Bible is the official Catholic Bible all the way through the 1970s. So it is, you need to understand that that's a piece of it, okay, that, that, that they're equated with, with this kind of hate. In, because it's about Jews not having the right to exist collectively, when they live in their little communities in the Middle Ages, anti-Semitism is a hate against their religion. By the time you get to the 18th and 20th centuries, when so many Jews... He's talking about the evolution of anti-Semitism and why he can't give a simple definition because now it's an evolution of a term. Yeah, that sounds familiar, bro. Jews have assimilated. They are in culture, they are in arts, they're in science. It's no longer against them for their religion. It's against them for their race. This anti-Semitism is the oldest hate in the world and the hate that mutates. In 1948, because remember, it's Lord Sachs. Oh, I just want to pause it. You said it's a hate that mutates. Correct. So your belief then is that the definition of anti-Semitism can necessarily change. Is that correct? It's not just my belief. It is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. Okay. This isn't, okay. As I said, that's why I quoted, this is a quote. It's a great thing from Lord Sachs. Uh, you know, Jonathan Sachs, it's a great thing from Niall Eckett. This, this is just accepted as the understanding of, you know, a cultural okay. anthropologist. So I, I would just say off the bat, I do not accept that definitions can just mutate. That is something that Thank I, I could you. debate that on. Like the definition of a woman, I mean, and I'm saying not just about Jewish people, I think that we have to have a concrete definition to work with because then you can just update and say, actually, I've changed that mm -hmm. and now this is what constitutes anti Semitism. But Candace, that is the horror of anti-Semitism. So what you are saying to me is that anti-Semitism is this and does not change. What I am saying to you is that the entire world and scholars about anti-Semitism recognize that it is a unique hate. That if you define it as the, the, the that, that you should not be able to exist collectively, mm -hmm. Okay, as a collective, they shouldn't have that right. That changes from the Middle Ages with religion, the 18th through 20th centuries about race. And then after Israel is created, it's a hatred based on the nation. And until that's until that is understood that 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 it is. So this is why this is why being an anti-Zionist is considered to be anti-Semitic, because it's not enough for you to say that i don't care if the jews exist as a people i i don't i don't give a fuck if people, i don't i don't care i don't care but what i do care about is us giving billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to israel i care about that 
I don't think that should be happening. What I do care about is the fact that Israel is currently engaging in a genocide against the Palestinians. And I'm sorry, I don't I don't know how people defend this anymore. How many tens of thousands of Palestinians have died because of Israel's bloodlust and their and their war to get a piece of land, which I said from the beginning, if you go back, I said from the very beginning of this bullshit that this was all a land grab. And I wasn't the only one saying that. And every single person who said that was called anti-Semitic. I never gave a flying F about Israel until they started genociding the Palestinians several months ago. But no, that's not they, that's considered to be anti-Semitic now too. And then on Friday, we learned that it's it's anti-Semitic to be against black and brown immigrants that are coming into the country through the, from the southern border, even if they're not Jewish. That's anti-Semitic. It's anti-Semitic to be against critical theory in the Frankfurt School. That's anti-Semitic. If you want to talk about the evolving nature of the definition of anti-Semitism, we're seeing it happen right before us, and it seems to be anything that these people do not like. You don't even have to be against the Jews to be anti-Semitic anymore. That is literally their definition. We heard about it on Friday. It is called post-anti-Semitism. This isn't something that's really questioned about among academics, theologians, Jewish scholars. I, I, I'm not presenting it. I, this is why I thought I'm so optimistic about a dialogue. But I think a part of it is you view that the hate can't mutate. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is that we have 2,000 years of history that demonstrate the exact opposite. So that and I, I'm, I'm going to just up. push back very, just gently here. For me personally, if I thought that racism could just be an ever-shifting uh, definition based on the experience of Black people, mm -hmm. it would be a remarkable power, and I would be able to create something like BLM, which could say that everything was racist. So I am not going to be able to agree that definition should be able to transform according to what's happening during the day. But here's what I will say. If you could, just because I think it's really important um, for us to get to going through this article, because then you might be able to explain why you view it as anti-Semitism. If you could just give us what you are saying the current definition of anti-Semitism is today, that would be very helpful. Yes. The current definition of anti-Semitism today has to do with what the feelings are. It has to do with anti-Zionism, number one. What? That is a definition. Anti-Zionism, anti-Israel is anti-Semitism. Go fuck okay. guys. So you believe that Jewish people can be anti-Semitic? Absolutely. Okay. So so when you no. see a and, gathering and when, when of I, Jewish people who say, you know, I'm Jewish, but I don't support Israel or Bibi Netanyahu, you say that person's an, that person can be anti-Semitic. You just did two different things and was very... Uh, you just did two things, two different things that were totally unrelated, Candace. No, okay. you said that Mom. you said that Jews that no. do not support Israel. Yes, and you said Jews that do not support Bibi Netanyahu. I'm just saying that because he's the current no. prime minister. So I'm saying like if they if they say no. they don't support no. this is this is where you're missing the point. So okay. I'm going to go under the following premise. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go under the premise that you care about people. You and I don't know each other, but I'm going to go into that premise. I'm going to go into the premise that you have no desire to ever hurt anyone. I just want to be very clear that if anyone wonders what mansplaining looks like, this is what mansplaining looks like. And I know, I know there are men in the chat that don't want to believe that mansplaining is a thing, but this is what mansplaining looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the premise I'm coming into this dialogue with. You have been devastatingly hurtful. And I, and, and I think that, that, that I'm going to go from that you don't understand what it means to the Jewish world. Mm -hmm. There's a great teaching that, that comes out of every sociologist, every person in, in academics, is that I don't get to tell a black man if he's experiencing racism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He knows. I don't get to tell you if you're experiencing misogyny. You know. If I make a comment that's misogynistic, and you say, Rabbi, you know that was really misogynistic, my job is to say, wow, 
I didn't mean that. I apologize. Literally was. That's not what I meant. And you, do you, and do not get the right to say what is anti-Semitic or Jew hatred. I'm no, sorry. No, I'm not trying to, to, I didn't, I don't think I said anything about wow. me having the right. I just said to you, would you then view, because I, I did host somebody who was Jewish, yeah. Dave Smith, mm -hmm. on my yeah. show. I'm sure you're familiar with him. Uh, he's a comedian. He's a libertarian. He is not pro-Zionist. So I'm just asking you for clarity because you're saying that you can't dismiss right. a Jewish he's person, but aren't you thereby dismissing Jewish people who say that I don't support Israel as a state? I'm just trying to, to have you answer that and, question. And the answer they... is, I, I, I will ask you back the same question. Mm -hmm. Are there blacks who are do not support blacks? Are there pick the cause or the minority? Who do not support or are not or or are actually are even better. You and I both sit on the conservative side. We share that, right? Yeah, um, not and <laughs> we face the same way when it comes to that. And we both, I think, are disappointed in those who are Republicans in name only, correct? Yes. Okay. Does that mean they're not Republicans? Yes. Well, I wouldn't describe a race as a political ideology, like a, a political party. That's very different. So yes, to say that you can't be a race, Israel. like you're not That's black true. if you don't support this is different than like, you're basically saying that a Jewish person can be anti-Semitic. So that would be like saying a black person can in fact be racist um, towards, or, or, or they're can, not black. Look, I, I'm not going to comment on black com community. Mm -hmm. I will say there are plenty of self-hating Jews. Okay, so you do believe, that's all I was trying to get you to say, is that Jewish people who don't support Israel, you are saying they are anti-Semitic. I just want to understand that. I'm saying it very clearly, they are self-hating Jews. Let's wow. use that term very specifically. Okay. And you need to understand why they are self-hating Jews. And you need to understand, as as numerous people have talked about, I've written about, Gregor's talked about, Gorka's talked about, Levin's talked about, a number of people have talked about, um, Shapiro's talked about, as I say, I've written about is that a a people want to assimilate for two thousand years. Jews have been persecuted, and so they want to assimilate. And so many have converted from Judaism not to another religion, but to leftist politics. That becomes their religion, and they lose their identity. That is a reality. So you need to understand, or I shouldn't say you need to. That's not fair, and I apologize. I hope I would hope that you understand a history and an understanding that we define what anti-Semitism is. And what happened on October 7th, what happened on October 7th, and I wrote an article about you on no, in November. I don't know if you read it or not. I was told that you had, but I don't know if you did or not. I did not. Okay. I wish you had, and I, and I really wish you had, because we might be in a very different place. You went on Tucker Carlson after all, this is in November. And well, okay, go ahead. I, I'm gonna say I, I want to talk about that because you put that in your you put that in this article, which was published just last week. So so I wrote a very specific article and you can you can find it right now. And it was an impersonal invitation to you and for you that despite everything else I had read or seen or heard. Okay. So, so essentially what happened, and correct me if I'm wrong, Candace Owens went on Tucker Carlson. Candace Owens said things that the rabbis didn't like on Tucker Carlson. The rabbi then wrote an article in which he invited Candace Owens to participate in a struggle session about things that she said that he didn't like about Tucker Carlson. Candace Owens, probably because she's doing a lot of stuff, had no idea that this article was written and never read it because the rabbi was pissed off that Candace Owens did not invite his, did not accept his initial invitation to the struggle session. He then wrote another article in which he struggle sessioned her more. Do I basically have that right? Self-hating equals individuals who are willing to call out their own communities BS. Exactly. That my belief and my hope is that your your comment of wanting to have an academic discussion about October seventh came from a place of not really realizing what October seventh was. October seventh is unique in recorded human history as the ugliest day of humanity. What? 
what was done what? on October 7th. October 7th is the ugliest day in the history of humanity. Can we get can we get some examples of potentially more ugly days in the history of humanity? I'll go. I'll go. Wasn't 9/11 more deadly than October 7th by like a significant degree am i am i making that up what other specific days yeah yeah it seems like there were some other events in the history of humanity yep yeah i mean some would argue that january 6th is the ugliest day in the history of humanity true yep pearl harbor yeah most days in World War II, Genghis Khan, 9-11. If Jews were being genocided, we would be against... Th- th- this is exactly right. If the Jews were actually being genocided, I would be against that as well. I don't believe in genocide. I, I generally think it's bad. How-, how about when like nuclear bombs were dropped on Japan? Wasn't that an ugly day? Are you shitting me? Yeah, the volcano in Pompeii. is unique in recorded human history as the ugliest day of humanity. Not correct. What was done on October 7th? Taking a young woman, taking her phone to videotape her being raped on the corpse of- And to be clear, I'm not arguing what happened on October 7th was good. I'm not arguing that I condone any of that. I don't condone that. I think that all war is bad. I think that all violence is bad. I'm in favor of the non-aggression principle. I'm not like, but, but, but this is the thing. You have to qualify this to say, just because I don't think October 7th was the worst event in the history of humanity doesn't mean I was in favor of it either. Yeah, he's really condescending to her. Indeed. It was terrible, but not unique. Her dead boyfriend and then shot on and sending that video to her parents. Beheading a man with a garden hoe, kicking a woman until her body parts fall. Is is unique in terms of the intention to attack civilians. And so in November, after you made the comment on Tucker Carlson, about wanting an academic discussion about how, you know, those kind of comments that you made and the ennui that you, that you demonstrate. I wrote an article saying that I would arrange for you, there's a, a film, 47 minute film by the IDF. Oh, he wanted to put her- It is based, it is, not based it is all the footage done by the Hamas terrorists of what they were doing so proudly what they wanted to do. And that my belief was, I don't think that you quite realize that. And I would arrange for private screening for you and your friends. Mm -hmm. that I would arrange that and then have the discussion about how you feel about October 7th. Okay, so I just really would like to get to your article because I think it's important. I want to acknowledge your pain about October 7th. Uh, you are wait, 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 that's not an opinion. That's not an opinion. No, 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 I didn't say it opinion, is an opinion. I, said I want to acknowledge your pain about I apologize. October 7th. I apologize. I, think yeah. I apologize. I didn't say that. I said it is I want to acknowledge your pain about October 7th and I want to get to that because you are... Because that's all yeah, you're mischaracterizing what I said on Tucker Carlson, but I do have the clip and we're going to be able to to watch it. I right. definitely did not say I wanted to have an academic debate about October 7th. That's not you what I said at all. Um, I, but I, like I said, I, I have the clip. Uh, and I do also want, I think it's, it's best for us to dive into what, what you actually wrote about me because there are several mischaracterizations, I believe, of what I said, but both of us are going to be able to watch it. Um, so again, this, this is the article. And, and by the way, you did say in this article that you heard that I received your invitation. That is false. I, so I, I think it's important no, no, to just maybe name the people who told you that I received your invitation. No, I- hey guys, I just want to do a quick pause. 
please mount the like button for me on on whatever platform you're watching on, whether that be YouTube or Rumble. I know that, uh, or I mean Twitter. You can you can mount that. You can heart it on Twitter, retweet it on Twitter. Um, liking it really helps to boost uh, the number of people who actually see my stuff, especially on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube and you haven't mounted the like button yet, please do so. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'd rather not do that, especially since you're saying that it's incorrect. And in which case, I apologize. No, you can apologize. I just think that like a lot of the reason that things happen is because there is this sort of back channeling and discussion and nobody told me that I got an invitation and now you've written that I refused an invitation. And so that adds well, to okay. people believing. So, so Candace, I'm going to ask you a question right now. I'm inviting you to forget about the article because I have no issue and would love to write an article saying I was wrong. Candace Owens does not feel that way. He I would love that. Her. So I'm inviting you right now I will set up a screening for you. Will you come? If you set up a screening for me after we go through this, I just, I just, I want to also be able to estimate your character by going through some of the things that you wrote. You did write some things that I believe. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm asking you yes or no question. No, no, no. And I just said to you, I, I'm going to give you an answer to that, but I want to first go through your article because I want to be able to wait, estimate. Wait, wait. I'm asking you a question. I will take sir, the entire sir. article. I am. I, I am and, not. And, I'm not saying I'm not going to answer your question. I am just saying that I would like to go through this, see how you I'm feel. You, you sir, said sir. you haven't had an invitation. I'm asking you. I don't have to be there. I'll set it up that's, for you. Okay, sure. If you want to set it up for me to have a screening of that here without you there, that's fine. What I'm saying is that okay, I would great. not. I, 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 based on what you wrote about me, I wouldn't take an invitation. I wouldn't take an invitation from you anywhere. I think that's fair, given what's in this article. I think that's a normal human said, response that if somebody has written somebody something that is utterly libelous about you, it wait, mischaracterizes you what you said. said but you if you want to set it up separately thing. and you want to send it to the Daily Wire and you want us to have a private screening, I absolutely will watch the events of October 7th. I, that's, you know what? God bless you. And had I ever heard you say that, I wouldn't have written an article. Well, I think you still would have because you made a lot of points in here. Um, no, no, I wouldn't have. No, I wouldn't have because I believe in the idea that it's about what. If you just commit to the emotional rape that I want you to commit to, if you just admit that October 7th was the worst day in the history of humanity, then I wouldn't have written a defamatory article about you in the first place. Yeah, sure, bro. Sure. Okay, whatever. We act and learn. And, and we have a concept called shoot and shoot No, actually, honestly... Had you said there, had, at any point, what you just now said to me, that you would watch a screening, I don't need to be there, that you would watch a screening, um, if I set it up, I would not have written that article. Okay. Well, I do still want to go through these points, though, because you... you okay, but it, do you hear that, please? Yes, I hear that, and thank you for saying oh, that. Great. But a lot of, of what you wrote in this article is a lot of what I'm assuming you're, you have a friendly relationship with Rabbi Shmuley has been saying about me. So it's really important to go through these points because... When you write something so, like is a Jew hating bigot, that's very strong language. And we, we need to go through these points. So, so we'll go through all of them, sure. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Just let's just begin here. So you you basically make the argument that I'm that I'm drunk on fame and that that is the reason why I have let out the truth about who I am, which makes me a Jew hater. First thing you say is that this is a woman who is such an anti-Semi and so ignorant of history. That in 2018, she publicly said that Hitler was okay. Do you mm -hmm. actually believe that I publicly said that Hitler was okay? So from the recording that I heard, including the congressional testimony, which I think was taken out of context, and from the comments that you said, okay, if I, I and you correct if I'm wrong, but my understanding from your comments is you were asked a question about nationalism. Mm -hmm. And you responded about nationalism using the example that nationalism was good and that what Hitler did, Hitler was nationalistic in Germany, and that was okay. You have said specifically you think Hitler is a horrible, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you have condemned Hitler, thank God, without question. And you also brought him up in that discussion about nationalism. Is that all accurate? So when you just write, she publicly said Hitler was okay. That is dishonest because what I actually was saying was answering a question, as you brought up, where we were not even talking about Jews, not talking about the Holocaust. A woman was asking about whether or not it's right. okay for people today to say that they're nationalists when it's often associated as a, a dirty word. And what I was saying was that 
It's wrongly associated with Hitler. I don't believe that Hitler was a nationalist because obviously Hitler invaded Poland. He obviously had ambitions outside wait, wait, of... Know? So what, we have the clip. We have the clip. True. So we're going to play it. True. So again, the question that's being asked of me bro. is whether or not nationalism is, nationalism is an yeah. okay word to embrace. Let's play the clip so we can hear me and what that I actually right. said. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all uh, with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by uh, elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not, to me, that's not nationalism. So again, we're trying there to define nationalism. Does your statement, right. she publicly said that Hitler was okay. Is that you, an honest statement? Yeah. So let's, let's talk about this for a moment. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, Why you were you asked a yes question no? about nationalism. Mm -hmm. You responded with an example of Adolf Hitler. Yes. I said because Americans associate, the reason why they think it's a dirty word is because of Adolf Hitler. You respond, and you have subsequently, and I've seen you subsequently, and I think you even said it in the congressional hearing, you have obviously condemned him for who he was. Um, but you brought Hitler's name into a discussion. Correct. Okay. And you justify that this is how America feels or how people feel. And that's your take on it. It's not necessarily accurate. And in fact, it probably isn't from, a, from an actual sociological standpoint. But that's your opinion. Fine. But Candace, you, you put in the same sentence what he did if it just had stayed in Germany was okay. But more importantly, and here's a piece of the anti-Semitism. Why bring one of the most evil men of history into the discussion? You could just as easily have given any negative examples of nationalism. Why are we not allowed to talk about Hitler? Candace Owens wasn't saying Hitler is a good person. Candace Owens wasn't saying that she supported Hitler. Candace Owens brought Hitler into the, the equation as an example. Why are we not allowed to talk about Hitler? You chose to bring Hitler up, not them. I did. And I, I have no, I'm, I, I, if I could go backwards in the context of trying to understand why Americans think that nationalism is a bad word. It was appropriate for me to bring off Adolf Hitler. It is totally appropriate in any capacity when you are talking about history and historical sentiments to bring up any relevant character that has created those sentiments. Milk tea graper, you just bought a house, bro? Good for you. Good for you. So are, I just want to, again, I just want to yes or no. After watching okay. that, in, we, I, I want to make sure we don't run out of time here. After watching that in context, do you think it is fair that you wrote, she publicly said that Hitler was okay? Hitler was okay. Yeah. Yes, by bringing me even into the conversation, yes, I do. Okay, great. Let's move on here, because um, I, again, this discussion, we're having it between us, but I, I, I want the public to be able to, wow. you know, to do what's that. fair and what's not fair. Yeah. You then I wrote this of statement. Mentioning Hitler. A mere month after the horrors of babies being beheaded, women being raped, and the slews of horrors from Hamas, Owens went on Tucker Carlson's show to speak about how it really wasn't that bad and why should she even care? After all, she seems to think that Hitler was okay, so what's the problem? Is that true that I went on Tucker Carlson's show and said that October 7th really wasn't that bad? Um, yeah, actually it did. And it did it through the implications and the words and and I actually do know where some of those clips are because I rewatched it multiple times. You didn't say and that. And you, you specifically said it, say nod, nod, you want to have an way. academic discussion. You specifically say, um, I, I don't want to misquote you, that you have a you have a you believe you have a moderate stance okay. because you see the 
children dying and on both sides, and you talk about um, the pain, and I, and I think you do feel pain about Gaza. Um, and this goes back to the anti-Semitism campus. What happened October 7th is unique. No. It is... Denied. It's to, not. To even make a moral equivalency, this is one of the keys in anti-Semitism and in any prejudice and bigotry, is that an inappropriate moral... So now if you say... Now if you say that what happened on October 7th was not the worst tragedy in the history of humanity, that's anti-Semitic too. Equivalency is created. When someone says that this race, these people, whomever, are like dogs, they've made a moral equivalency between those people and dogs, that is bigotry. That okay. is hatred. So I, just, that? I, I first want to Would debunk the that? idea that, I, I first want to debunk the idea that I did not, like I in any way said it really wasn't that bad. That statement never came out of my mouth. And I also want to show that actually, contrary to that, wait, 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 I, condemned, that I, condemned, I condemned what Hamas did. So let's just show that clip of what I said. And then I want to get to your quotation about academic discussion. Let's just show what I said about Hamas. I have seen every single person, including myself, condemn what happened on October 7th. I have, because who wouldn't condemn terrorism? It's obvious right. who would not condemn innocent Israelis dying. But if you then say that it is also sad when an innocent Palestinian child dies, suddenly this is pro Hamas, or you need to say, even when you're talking about how sad it is that a child dies, you need to button that statement by saying, but that child was a human shield. That's not going to be my response. Um, first off, as a mother, that's not going to be my response as somebody who is about to do to give birth when I see these images of children yes. involved on both sides of the conflict. I have pointed to the, the people that are mocking dead Israeli children and said that they are horrific. I am even keel on this matter. And yet people think that you need to be extreme. So people that have become more radical and extreme are perceiving a moderate stance as not enough. And you, I was about to say, you don't, people can disagree with you or agree with you or whatever, but you certainly don't seem radical on this topic. <laughs> And I'm going to hold here before you comment on that, because your next sentence, as you just said, she wanted to talk about the depravities of Hamas as an academic discussion and refused to even condemn Hamas. So we just saw that I did condemn Hamas. Um, and regarding the academic discussion. No, you didn't. Actually, I'm sorry. No, she literally did. a moral did. equivalency between Hamas and Gaza. I didn't do There that. is no moral equivalency. What Hamas did <laughs> is evil. It is oh, not a tragedy. Only on. It is evil. I'm sorry, Candace. But you make an equivalency that does wow. not exist in most people's minds and certainly in no Jews' minds. Okay, so I'm glad that you said that so people can hear what I actually said and hear what you are saying and how you are taking it. I don't know how you could write this statement. She refused to condemn Hamas when I literally said who would not condemn these horrific you said, events. You don't condemn them uniquely evil. You put them in parapassu relationships. So you're saying that. We so it's literally what I said before. If you don't say that October 7th was the most evil day in the history of humanity, that's literally anti-Semitic, according to rabbis. You're saying that even though I did, con so now you're admitting that I did condemn Hamas, even so though you wrote, she refused to condemn you Hamas. This what condemnation is? Is this where you really want to go is have an English no, discussion? You, you, I, no, 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 no. You wrote she refused to condemn Hamas. These are your because words. Because when you put that at the moment, you say that they have a moral equivalency with anything else, that's not condemnation no matter I didn't. what. I said, I said it is, it's sad when an innocent. It's not condemnation. And is it's it, not I'll extreme. just ask you a question. Sorry, is it sad? Is it sad? Sure. sit there and do that. I don't want to cut each other off. Okay. Because clearly what we are having here is just a disagreement. There's no reason to get angry. Do you think uh, do you, no, do you think it is sad when an innocent Palestinian he child dies? If he doesn't get angry. Candace, I cry every day. Oh, I saw that. And it's not just for Israel. I saw this clip. This is And this, this is one of the This is like this is where he says that he he we look at this freeze frame this is the best. But this is like where he says that he weeps for the fact that Palestinians made the Israelis murder their children. Things you clearly do not understand. The same when most don't who are anti Semitic you don't get it. I cry for what's going on in Israel. You made us I cry do just it. as much you made for us what we are forced it. to do. You wore a short skirt. You made Golda Meir had a great you. quote. She said that one day we may be able to forgive them for killing Israeli children. We will never be able to forgive them for making them making us kill their children. 
So Three what about we will never be able to make the to we will never be able to forgive the Palestinians for them making us kill their children. Yo. My statement of saying that I also cry for Palestinian children is wrong to you if you also admit it is sad when Palestinian children die. It's painful, but it is not in any way, shape, or form morally equivalent to October 7th. You don't get to that. That is the anti Semitic bigotry. But I, I, I didn't say that. Order. I just want to be clear. People are watching. It's just not what came out of my mouth. But I, I'm not going to, I don't want to, I don't want to get hung up. I don't want to get hung up on that. I want to, I want to now point to, um, you said I wanted to talk about the depravities. I'm going to quote it. She wanted to talk about the depravities of Hamas as an academic discussion. Actually, I was talking about NATO. And here is the clip of what I said when I used the words academic discussion. Take a listen. I mean, you can go back to me even talking about NATO expansion before things erupted between Russia and Ukraine yes. and, and having a meaningful discussion about how much expansion is too much expansion. How would we feel if we had troops on our border? These are things that should be allowed in an academic discussion. You should be able to sit on stage and should be able to debate these ideas without using ad hominem attacks. You're using it in the reference, Candace, in the dialogue about October 7th. You're using your discussions of NATO as an analogy an analogous way about how we should be able to discuss October 7th. From a foreign policy. No okay. So you think that it is fair after listening to that, me talking about right. NATO and me talking about Russia and Ukraine and saying that we should always be able to have an academic discussion about foreign policy. You think your statement still is fair saying that she wanted to talk about the depravities of Hamas as an academic discussion? Because you're using that context and you're the one taking your own quotes out of context. I played it. I didn't take it out of context. I just played it. Then play the whole paragraph we were talking before that the entire issue. I did. Is so the first part was what I just showed you. That was actually yeah. a, a split clip. The first part, the oh. first half of that was when you, the, the one that we just showed you. Apparently, Zionist feelings don't care about Candace Owens's facts. When you said that, I said it really wasn't that bad. And why should she even care? The first part I say, I condemn Hamas. And then I said that my, I've been a consistent in always saying that we should have a topic. We should be able to discuss foreign policy removed from ad hominem attacks because that is the truth and that's how I feel. But to be clear, Candace, I just broke out academic discussion because I was referring. Candace, okay. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you really simple questions. Mm -hmm. okay? No, 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 no. I, I want to keep going through this. I, no, I think no, it's important it's about, here. This. it's about this. So I'm, I'm going to ask you simple questions. Oh my God. Do you ever mean to hurt people because of their race, religion, or color? Fuck ever. you! Do I ever mean to hurt people? Say that because of their because of their race, religion, or color ever. ever. I can't hear the last part. Of, I don't know why I'm 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 not. Ever, I'm sorry. Well, let's apologize. We know about the technology. Do you ever intend to hurt or want to hurt anyone based on their race, religion, theology, color, etc.? No, but you do. Never, Candace. not okay. once. But you do. But you. All right. Do. The implications of your actions are that you do. What you need to hear is that you do hurt people, Candace. Your statement. Here it I'm is. not alone in this. Holy shit. Because it is the whole context of October 7th. You hurt the entire Jewish people, Candace. It's hurtful to Jews. See? Oh, okay. shit. And I want to give you, and I'd like to give you an analogy that I think will, that might really help our dialogue. If that's okay. Mm -hmm. A number of years ago, a movie came out called The Passion of the Christ. Did you, did you see the movie? Yes, it's a wonderful movie. Okay. And um, I saw the movie as well. I saw it the opening day and saw it twice. And I arranged True. for a screening of priest students, minister students, rabbinic students, rabbis, ministers, and priests. The Loyola Marymount when I was a professor. Okay. And I realized something in watching that movie. There are two movies going on. If you accept Jesus as your Savior, then that movie is so brilliant and so painful about his suffering that it, it, tran it, it, it transcends everything else, and that's all you see. And I think you just said it was a brilliant movie, and, and, and as many of my friends did, Loyola, et cetera. I think it was a brilliant movie, too, as well. If you don't accept Jesus as your savior, you're not so emotionally attached to all the suffering that Gibson portrays so well. And so what you do notice is an example. Wait. Is he saying that if you're not a Christian 
and you watch The Passion of the Christ, which is a horrifically violent movie. If you have never seen it, I actually think it's a great movie. But like his argument is that if you're not a Christian, you can't emotionally connect with the suffering of Christ as depicted in that movie. I don't agree with that, bro, because that was the suffering. Well, living in the land in which Jesus was a historical figure, which may or may not be true. I don't want to have that argument right now. But like, if you couldn't emotionally connect with the suffering of a human being in that movie because you yourself are not a Christian, you might be dead inside. Is are all the anti-Semitic things. So I had a discussion with a woman who's the senior vice president of Loyola when the movie came out. She said, Rabbi, there's no anti-Semitism. I said, actually, I'll give you an example of one scene. There's a scene of little Jewish kids who chase Judas and they morph into demons. And they're wearing modern 20th century yarmulkes and they have classic Jewish archetypes, stereotypical faces and they morph into demons. And with modern yarmulkes, it's the, that trope of Jews as demons. And Lainey said to me, I don't remember that scene. And I realized in that moment she was so emotionally involved in the suffering of Jesus, she didn't notice the anti-Semitism. But both are true in the movie. You may not have the desire to have that pain in your heart, but what I'm trying to tell you is, by having a conversation with Tucker Carlson uh, under the umbrella of October 7th, which is what that Jews, segment Candace, was about. You heard all of us by having a and conversation. And saying that you have a that moderate we did not approve stance, of? that there should be able to be discussion, like just like there is in, about NATO. It validates the reality of the absolute evil that is unique to October 7th. Had you asked me on October 6th what to do with Hamas, Despite that in their covenant of 1988, their charter, which I don't know if you've read, despite the fact that in Article 7, 11, and 13, they call for the destruction of all Jews. If you'd asked me on October 6th, I would say we should do whatever we should do for peace. What they did on October 7th was surrender their human souls. They became Amalek, if you're familiar with the character from the Bible. And He's arguing that October 7th surrendered the human souls of the Palestinians? Bro. And what they did is so evil, it cannot be compared to anything else. Just like what Hitler did is so evil, no one should compare. I don't care if it's Trump or Obama, no one should compare any political leader to say to him. You did it under a guise. Whether you meant to or not, it was anti Semitic. The only evil that ever happens in the world happens exclusively to Jews. It's almost like they think they're better than all of us. It's almost like they want to dehumanize anyone who's not a Jew. Okay, so I just I don't, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't accept that characterization. So what I'm doing now is I'm allowing you to say what you believe and showing the clips, it, not removed from their context. And like, we have to just allow, you know, people to take from this discussion what they can. If you're like most Americans, you're no. struggling to make ends meet. Everything no is ad. Come on. That's it. I want to move on, though, because then the next sentence almost appears to me to be the inversion of what actually happened. You write, she castigated Ben Shapiro for being passionately pro-Israel. I couldn't find a clip on that, uh, so I just wanted to ask you what you were referring to, because it actually what happened was Ben insulted me publicly. I have not insulted Ben publicly. So I'm just wondering where that sentence, where we can look I, I for find, me castigating I, Ben Shapiro all, for being pro I will try and find the actual clips, number one. Number two. Just off the top of your head, where, where, where I was when I castigated him, what, I, where I was when I disrespected him. Candace, I, I will be happy to go try and find you things about it. I'm sure Ben can find them as well. I'm sure other people can. I want to make something real clear about this, though. I don't think that there is a place for any of the kind of dialogue, yep. especially between people who are the same conservatives indeed, or on the same side. Indeed. I don't think there's a place to personally insult anyone. And that comes from both sides. 
I don't think it's okay for anyone to insult you or your family. I don't think it's okay for you to insult anyone or their families. I call you an anti-Semite because I, that is how I judge what the way you act and what you've said. Okay. I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased that you've agreed to watch the documentary. Mm -hmm. Makes me very happy. And you can comment on it after you've watched it. Makes me really happy, honestly. Okay. And I think that and hope that after you see that, you'll have a whole different understanding. But I don't think it's okay for anyone to say, make personal attacks. Now, when Ben Shapiro calls you an anti-Semite, I call you an anti-Semite. I only wish goodness on your soul, but that is how you act. Okay. That's very different than calling you a fill-in-the-blank pejorative. Okay. But you did write, she castigated Ben yeah. Shapiro for being pro-Israel. So I'm just happy asking to find, you. Happy to, find, happy to find the exact quotes for you. Happy to find them. Because I, I, just never, I it just never happened. I would never. Uh, okay, you're saying that. I'm happy to find. Okay, but where he did. You he did that. insult me, but I did not insult Ben. So that that was very interesting because I was okay. like, that's almost Candace. an inversion of what happened here. Well, okay, Candace, he says something differently, I think, but I I will find and give. I'm happy to let Skylar know mm -hmm. a a place in the and only in that specific interview, by the way. In oh, in that talking. interview. We're you're talking about that interview. That's why I was asking you what interview. Tuck, me and Tucker talking about Ben. Me you're saying Tucker, that I castigated him Paul for being pro-Israel. Okay, I'm, I'm happy. To, I'll say it again. I'm happy to find those spaces mm -hmm. where you castigated him, and send them to Skylar, and, and and you can decide to share them with your so audience. So no we'll put it in right right no, in here. If there's a, a example of a clip of no, me doing that, um, it's actually. A, I abstained from doing that and told Tucker that it's not something that I would do. Um, okay, then you go on to talk about me attacking Rabbi Shmuley. My audience has already seen him attacking me over the last two years. Um, and I'm just going to ask you a basic question. Does a black person or any person have a right to defend themselves? Absolutely. When they are, okay, because that is interesting. Because Rabbi Shmuley and his daughter have attacked me and made videos of me for two years straight. I have okay, responded Candace. once, and you have now, you're basically saying that I'm anti-Semitic for responding. So I'm just, I want your, no, no. your perception of when it no, is please, that a black person is allowed to respond. So, Candace, so first of all, I know Listen. Shmuley peripherally, we've probably met a half a dozen times, okay? He is an incredibly knowledgeable man. He formed the Lukhaim Society at Oxford. Incredibly knowledgeable man. Um, and with nine kids, right? And we have something in Judaism predates Christianity, but it's also Christianity as well to an extent, published on Hurrah, the evil tongue, that to gossip, to uh, to say certain things like that are, are is, is really a, a, a huge avera, it's a huge sin, it's a huge chay. He's making the argument they're not allowed to gossip. I don't know all the things that he has said about you. I do know he's called you an anti-Semite, and so have I. That's not a personal attack on you and your family. It is, actually. It literally is. For you to call a man who is extremely knowledgeable. Wait. An unholy rabbi. Wait, wait, wait. So the rabbis are allowed to very publicly call Candace Owens an anti-Semite using made up, like fabricated, like evidence that is not even real over and over and over and over and over again. And that's totally okay. And that's totally not gossip. And that's totally not an attack on her and her family. But Candace is not allowed to respond. And if she does, that's anti-Semitic. And his hag daughter. Mm -hmm. Forgetting about what he I may or may not have done. Here. If he's attacked you personally, if he's said whatever horrific things about you personally, that you are a blankly, 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 blank, he's wrong. Of, of If he's attacked you or your children or your family, your mother, um, for you to, rather than comment on whatever he's done, to call him an unholy rabbi, that is way out of line. You don't even know what a rabbi is supposed to do. So let me ask you a question. Look, dude, by the way, do you view Listen that as anti-Semitic? For me to yes. respond. Calling someone an unholy rabbi is the most anti-Semitic thing that anyone could ever do. And so it's anti- Okay, so he can attack me for two years. Is he a racist, just to be clear? 
I don't know when he attacks you, so I can't okay, comment. So what if I say that the definition of racism changes, and if you attack a black person, <laughs> uh, uh, you're a racist? Candace, you don't get to get away with that. It depends no, how I'm it asking because at the beginning of this discussion, you I did say attacking. that you can't I tell a black person. Uh, it's been I, two years consistently of him, him and his okay, daughter I, attacking me, tell, wait, wait, saying wait, wait, that. I wasn't there. I, I'm asking you. I'm asking with all. Okay, but if you're saying that you weren't there, why would you put this into writing? Wait, wait. Is the, isn't it wait, coming upon you me. to research what's happened before you you, you start saying to <laughs> no, me that defending myself is anti-Semitic? Candace, Candace, if he attacked you personally, if he said you were a black fill in the blank, then he should be reprimanded that. He called but her it doesn't justify what you did. You don't know what a rabbi does. You don't know our theology. How dare you call him an unholy rabbi? How dare you go into the misogynistic, no, sorry, excuse me, the, the, the anti-Semitic trope of his hag daughter, something used throughout the late 18th and, and early uh, through the early 20th century. Sorry, sorry, hag so, is now anti-Semitic? Mm -hmm. So that is a term of his hag daughter that Everything goes back into the witches of, of, of Eastern Europe. Everything. Why do you have to call her a hag daughter? Just Tell to be me clear, that. because she's a witch. I think she's a witch. That's not because she's right, Jewish. Right, I, would call, right I would call someone wait, a hag of any yeah. color. I think she's a witch. Wait, what they wait, have wait, done wait, over wait, the wait. last two years. I believe his daughter is a hag. I said that because that's what I believe. You may disagree okay, with me on that, that, but to, to say that that's anti-Semitic that. is ridiculous. I would call any person okay. a hag. Candace, Candace. Um, this is so I'm gonna a session. Holy shit. be very clear without trying to be insulting. So please forgive I'm gonna me. I'm going to call you anti-Semitic okay, again. It's, oh, it's fine. You can insult me. I don't want to. I've dealt with two you years of a rabbi insulting me, so I'm 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 totally okay, cool with this. Yeah. I have no desire to insult anybody. Okay. I'm just standing up but for the Jewish people. Do you understand? Are you familiar with the hmm. history of the grim fairy tales and the folk tales of Eastern? Oh Europe? my God! I, I know that we can, I know that we can go back and we can also say no, that. no, 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 no. I'm asking a specific question. Okay. That the witch archetype of those fairy tales were specifically modeled and called the Jews, that the Jews of that part of the world were called hags and witches specifically because they didn't eat the same food, they had different practices, and they were excluded that way as part of the bloodline. So you are saying so that we can- make it into by calling a rabbi's daughter, mm -hmm. her a witch, a hag daughter. You have tapped into an anti-Semitic trope that goes back hundreds of years, whether you mean to or not. Okay. Now, now that I've told you that, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe there are better words to call her than a hag dog? No. I'm actually not going to edit my language for two people that have been attacking me for two years. And so what I'm going to say so, so. Is, is that, what I'm going to say is that, and I'm-, I'm I, I would say that calling someone a hag is actually pretty conservative language. There are many, many, many worse words that she could have chosen to call her. But whatever. They all would have been anti-Semitic. It doesn't matter. Could have picked any other word and it would have been the same argument. Don't you think there are other words you could have used? Like, no. I want to be very strong on this. I am not going to be told whether you want to dress it up as anti-Semitism, you want to dress it up as that, that I cannot respond and defend myself. I'm certainly not going to be told that I need to be contained in how I respond after two years of consistent attacks from two individuals. So I, I want to just say on that point, you and I will never come to an agreement. I wait, stand wait, by wait. everything I'm, that I'm I said about him, you. and I'm not going to have that everything that I say, including yesterday, when he says that me finding his the products and stuff that he sells and promotes as a rabbi to be unholy, to say that I'm only saying that because it's made in Israel, is totally ridiculous. But what it looks like to a lot of people, and I'm going to tell you this, and I'm expressing this, in case you are an individual, as I'm sure you are, that is concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism. But my suspicion is that people that are watching this are going to think that now we are using the word anti-Semitism like BLM began using racism, right? Ding, ding, Which ding. is to say no. that you cannot, yes. let me finish my statement. I'm just telling you what I am going, my, this is my suspicion. And I have tons of Jewish listeners, but given what you've said about Dave Smith, who is a libertarian, he is not a far left liberal. He just does not support what Israel is doing. So in this, you have said, that Jewish people, you, you've made comments about a lot of Jewish people who maybe don't agree with what's happening in Israel. You are now saying that a person who's being attacked for two years still needs to be. Rottweiler says, hag is a term used since the times of when Beowulf was written. This guy is no different than people who said orcs are racist towards Africans. 
Exactly. Careful on how they approach a Jewish person that's been doing the attacking. No one is going to accept that's that. Not what I'm that's that. That's Kenneth, ridiculous. Kenneth, and that's then to say this said. particular word, it sounds no, like Kenneth, everything that anybody says it needs to Kenneth, be first well, to I weigh it against the once. feelings of somebody and their history. You, I could find examples of black people being called witches. I can't then say that nobody can ever call a black person a witch. You know, even if it has it, what happened in Salem, you, you could you could go on and on, right? But the point is, is that if you're a black person, you've been attacked over two years. I don't care if a person calls him a rabbi. In fact, I would question what it means to be a rabbi. Maybe you can explain. If you have been consistently attacking and threatening somebody, literally, he gave a quote to the Jerusalem Post, which actually I like the Jerusalem Post. They report on things very accurately, in which he says that he wants to bankrupt Candace Owens. That is a direct threat to somebody's livelihood. It is despicable. And because you call yourself a rabbi, it does not mean that people cannot say but it is poignantly ridiculous that you are using finances as a mode of threat against people because you, you don't like their speech. It is ridiculous. And let me tell you what, that leans into an anti-Semitic trope about Jewish people and money. For a rabbi to stand up and say, okay. let's yes, bankrupt her. You can talk her. over me all day. You can scream. I'm you not saying I've let you talk a lot. That's not, that's not but, fair. But I've but let you talk a lot. Candace, it's your show. You're going to edit and say what you want to say. I'm not going to edit this whatsoever. I promise you. Okay. The, 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 great. Terrific. I appreciate that. No one has, if someone is attacking you, you can defend yourself. And, and if someone is saying a bad thing about you, I would even go and defend you as well for them saying that she's a black such and such. She's a female such and such. She's whatever it may be. If he's attacking you, and again, I'm not privy to those two years of, of attacks that you have. But the moment you start saying things like an unholy rabbi, when you do not know a rabbi's job and you don't know Judaism, you don't know what is considered kadosh, what is considered holy or not holy in Judaism. When the moment you make those kind of comments, you've crossed a line. And you didn't need to make them. I get you angry. I get you feel violated by them. I get you feel he, that he attacks you unjustifiably. I haven't been part of the discussions, so I, he may have. But that doesn't ever give you then the right to say what you said. And it demonstrates, again, a pattern of behavior of, a, of an unawareness that you have about Jewish theology, a lack of awareness you have about Jewish history, and about anti-Semitism. The fact that you can't accept what all academics, what the academics, I shouldn't say all because everything's in, in all, but what academics, what Lord Sachs, what theologians all accept about that anti-Semitism is the unique ache that mutates. What Prager has done a Prager U video on, the fact that you can't even mm -hmm. accept that is in itself problematic. I, I just, I, I think that. It's, do you understand that you have, to, you have decided that you, Candace Owens, are more knowledgeable, wise, and you'd be brilliant in a lot of fields. That's not, that's not what I've not, said. That's not, I've but, never said these things. I didn't say I was more knowledgeable, no, wise. I, I just I said, I, I call his daughter a hag, and I meant it. I'm not taking the words back. But, that's what but, I've said. But, but the fact that you can't accept that the definition of anti-Semitism that you think you know. This is worse than any struggle session that ever took place at Evergreen State College. I have seen my fair share of struggle se sessions over the years. This is one of the worst attempted struggle sessions I have ever seen in my life. And Candace Owens is doing exactly what you need to do when you find yourself in a struggle session, which is you do not bend the knee. No matter what is said, no matter what is done, no matter what names are hurled at you, no matter what threats are made, it doesn't matter. You do not bend the knee ever. So the definition better than scholars, academics, Jewish theologians, better than rabbis is a level of hubris. As I say, you may know all sorts of things about all sorts of topics, but you're now dancing in a field where Shapiro dances, I dance, where uh, Rabbi Shmuley, you know, and, and, and I'm trying to tell you that you are repeatedly doing anti-Semitic behavior, but your underlying premise that you said at the beginning of our dialogue was that you- Dude hasn't even given one definition of anti-Semitism in this entire stream.
you don't accept that definition of anti-Semitism. What I said is I don't accept yeah. that definitions mutate, is what I said to you at the beginning of this dialogue. And, 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 and I'm telling you that's the definition of anti-Semitism. You okay. have now said that you know more than Lord Jonathan Sachs, so I believe. Yeah. I'm going to guess. He's actually, allowed to have a different line, opinion. Because it's not that big of a world there. And you can ask anyone about Lord Sachs. You are now saying that you don't accept the definition. Well, okay. uh, what I'm saying to you is that there's debate even amongst Jewish people about the definition of anti-Semitism. So I now he's saying that it is anti-Semitic not to accept his specific definition of anti-Semitism, which his definition of anti-Semitism is it basically evolves depending on the circumstance about whatever they don't like today. I pointed to no, you. that's a pretty much accepted one. It, it, no, you're, that's a pretty that, much accepted one. If you're saying the definition mutates, then you're saying it has no definition, right? It has no, d d no definition. No, come, Comes from the word define. If it has definition, it has a shape, right? You, you can't say you the shape can mutate. The square can become a endless. circle, can become a triangle. It, it that means that it has no shape. You're talking about an amoeba, yeah. right? I'll say it again. It mutates because the definition. Again, I'm using. I'm quoting Lord Sachs directly. Quote again where he says that Jews have, this is his definition, it's pretty much accepted, Jews have no right to exist collectively as Jews with the same rights as other human beings. Yes, and that sounds like a mutates, definition. And the reason that it mutates how that becomes manifest is because in the Middle Ages, it's about religion. When they come out of the shtetls, when they go into the cosmopolitan areas, and in the 18th through 27th, or 20th century, excuse me, that hate, Matt has now manifested and mutated. So it's not about religion, it's about race. Just so I'm clear, did Lord Sachs say it mutates or are you saying it mutates? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Did Lord Sachs say it mutates or are Lord you? He's, Lord he's a, Sachs. He says it mutates. Correct. Can you can you just re-say the quotation, his direct quotation? That it is a hate that mutates. It is a hate that it is mutates. It's a virus, he calls it, that mutates. And that he's not alone in that. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you get to the 20th century, it now has mutated to be anti the nation. So the hate manifests as first religion, then as True. race, and now as nation. So would and you say that anybody who takes issue with anything that Israel does is an anti-Semite? Of course not. That's ludicrous. Okay, because- That's a ludicrous statement. What are you allowed okay. to disagree with? Because then why that, are- that's a, that's a ludicrous statement. Okay, I'm glad you said that because earlier when we were talking about Dave Smith and I said that some Jewish people don't agree with what Israel is doing as a nation, you suggested that they were self-hating Jews. That's not what I suggested. What I said is there's a very difference between supporting Israel and supporting Bibi or the government. There's a huge difference. Support of Israel is to understand, and, and I think, again, this is a place, Eugene Bishop, who was one of the heads of the Central Conference of American Bishops, a great Catholic leader. Um, said a number of things, and, and Monsignor, Royal, Monsignor Royal Vatican of Blessed Memory, I actually heard him say this. Uh, Royal said he was one of the first people to do interfaith dialogue after Vatican II. And Royal said the following. He said that no non-Jew can ever fully understand the relationship between the Jewish people and the land of Israel. In the same way that no Jew can understand how a bunch of old bishops, car, excuse me, old cardinals, Go into a building, white smoke comes out, and some of them one, suddenly one of them is infallible. Mm -hmm. It's a quote from Royal Vatican, blessed memory, one of the founders of interfaith dialogue in the 60s and 70s. What I'm trying to explain to you is our tie to Israel. That when you make an anti Zionist, not just you, when anyone makes a comment, an anti Zionist comment, that is anti Semitism. But when you say anti Zionist, that's not to me that's your facts, etc. And, when you say anti-Zionist, you don't mean criticizing Israel's government. Just no, you can criticize the government. Okay, so I'm just but, not. But, but criticizing. Okay, but there's. Let, let's go. Can we follow that path for a moment? Because I mm -hmm. think this might get us somewhere. And as I said from the beginning, I'm optimistic. I'd like to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. To criticize Israel's government is one thing. If you want to do that? Great. Um, that's you want to especially you want to criticize America's involvement in its relationship with Israel, you're an American citizen in support of that. But understanding, have you ever read the Covenant of 1988 for Hamas? No, I have not read the Covenant of 1988 for Hamas. So let me tell you about Hamas. 
in their charter, which you can find easily online, the Covenant of 1980. Another goddamn story. Um, they claim that they are a, the, the, a subsidiary for the region of the Muslim Brotherhood, which I'm sure you know a lot about or learned a lot. And they call for the obliteration of all Jews. They um, say in Article 7 that the Muslim Day of Judgment will not come until every Jew is killed and those few who still live hide between, and this is a quote, between the rocks behind, excuse me, behind the rocks and the trees, and the trees Whoa. call out, O Abdullah, what? O Muslim. There's a Jew hiding behind me, come kill him. So what? The definition of a Palestine, which there is no historical Palestine. Bro. The definition of a Palestine from the river to the sea, from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, means no Israel. It is, as Lord Sachs said, it is have, that they have, don't have a right to live collectively in a nation. And so when to, it's one thing to say, I don't agree with what the government's doing. It's an entire other thing to create a moral equivalency, which you keep doing inappropriately. A moral equivalency between... It's one thing to say that you don't agree with the government of Israel. It's another thing entirely to say that it's just as tragic when Palestinian children die as Israelis. Don't you understand how that is anti-Semitic, Candace? To say that it's just as tragic when Palestinian kids die as Israeli children because it is a false equivalency. They are not the same. Seriously? Mm. Anything Israel does, and what happened October seventh, there is no equivalency. Israel's not going out to go out and try to to take, go into to Arab homes and to take and torture a child in front of the parents in and then kill the child are. and kill the parents. In fact, they are. On Israel India. doesn't do that. Israel is the most Bro. ethical I, army I, in the nation. I, I think we might be having a fundamental disagreement on what moral equivalency is. All right. All right. We're going to have to put a pause in it there. We're going to have to put a pause on the part where the rabbi literally argued, well, Israel is committing a genocide in Gaza, that Israel's government is the most moral government and ethical government in the history of the world. Are you kidding me? Thank you, Tayton. But sadly, we've run out of time for this stream, guys, because I have a supporter call that starts in about seven minutes. But here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. At 8 p.m. tonight, I am going to be joining a Twitter space hosted by Lauren Chen in which we are going to be talking about the Christ is King stuff. You can find it on my X account. I'm Dr. Carlin B on X. You can also go to Lauren's account, which is probably have more followers than mine, which, whatever. But I'm going to be on that Twitter space, and it might be a little spicy, and it's going to be great. And my BFF, Carrie Smith, who is a member of a Christian cult, but has Carrie has come out very strongly and has said that she believes it is anti-Semitic to say Christ is king, which I don't know how Carrie reconciles that exactly because Carrie is a member of a Christian cult. Anyway, maybe Carrie will enlighten us, but there's going to be other people there too. It's going to be great. So I'm going to have to leave my supporter call a little early. So I do want to make sure it gets started on time. If you are in my supporter community and you still want to have the rest of the call, all I'm going to need to do is assign someone as host. So someone else can host the call while I go do this Twitter space thing. I do apologize on the timing of it, but that wasn't my thing. Anyway, I got to go take a quick break. Then we're going to start my supporter call and then come back. Um, I'm going to try to stream the space at 8 p.m. too. So I'll be streaming it on YouTube Rumble like all the other places just for posterity. And maybe if it gets done early, maybe we'll watch the rest of this crazy debate. All right, guys, that's all I have for right now. Please mount the like button on the way out the door. If you have not already, please subscribe on whatever platform you're watching on. I appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Bye.